How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Robotics Notes Elite. I believe, or at least I hope, that we are on our way through the first little, I guess, divergence, little route that we can take here to achieve an ending of some sort. I had read the guide a little wrong, so what we did in the last episode specifically is with the choices that we've made, and by going straight for finding the third Kimijima report, we have entered a route, I think. But if we were to respond uh, against very specifically, I think to Juna, actually, I, I think that's what it was stating in the guide. And then it, we went to go get the uh, the third report. Only then would we actually continue on with the main story perfectly because we have to get all these very specific responses in and all that for whatever reason. I'm just trying my best to follow the guide. To, I, I don't know what I'm achieving. I don't know what will come up from doing so or not doing so, but that's sort of my deal here. Either way, we're getting the third report in order to continue the story in some sort of way. But here I think we're taking a little bit of a divergence I don't know where it's going to lead us, but I guess we'll see here. Oh, and I guess we should uh, check Twitter. I have been advised not to respond to anything yet, but, but, we will someday, maybe. Uh, yeah, the flags are annoying. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the flags for the fourth report are somehow worse than all of the flags that we've gotten so far. I, I think, actually, one or two of the flags... Are literally impossible so that's that's great is the blueprint ready is it played 30 minutes 4-0 I guess there's nothing really to, re to respond there recently heard a girl's voice saying big brother in my son's room I hope it's not haunted by a ghost <laughs> a bit worried yeah y you probably should be boys going through puberty always have things they wish to hide from their parents I don't think we should worry about it my lovely wife oh really I'm so glad we get to see this publicly on Twitter. Mizuka-san is checking sales slips and doesn't even try to raise her head. Domo. I bow my head and make my way to the drink shelf. No. Kyomo, oh, here we go. Oh, so. Mizuka is tapping away on a calculator and doesn't look up. She responds with a shrug and lets the words go in one ear and out the other. The shelf is right in front of the register. I see the usual types of drinks lined up. I reach for a pack of scowl but stop myself. I instead grab the usual fruit sour melon. I thought I might try something different for once but eh. Mizuka -san. I call to her with my back still facing the register. I have no desire to eat one of those barf barftastic buns today, yeah. After a long moment of hesitation, I take a fruit sour melon to the register. Mizuka-san points at the steamer off to the side with her eyes. It's the middle of summer, yet she still has that cursed st uh, steamer going. Mizuka-san immediately stops tapping away at her calculator. Mizuka-san pushes the sales slips to one side, rests her chin on her other hand or on her hands, and stares vacantly out into the distance. Yeah, you know what? There was a scene where the two of them were talking, so yeah, I, I believe it. I see, so she keeps or she kept in touch with Mizuka-san. She called me before too, which means that she's deliberately avoiding Akiho. But why? Hmm. Mizuka-san 
I smile bitterly and nod my head as I place a 100 yen coin on the counter. I glance at Mizuka's son from the side as she puts the coin in the register. Something suddenly crosses my mind. The attitude shift Mizuka's son had when I last mentioned Kimijima Ko and Airi. Does she know something about Kimijima Ko? I glance over at the steamer. I pick up my drink and shake my head. I hurry out of the store. That's just too steep of a price to pay, you know? It's been raining since early this morning, so club activities got called off. I'm just glad it's not a downpour. Crazy showers aren't rare during the summer. Akiho contacted me early to let me know that club activities were off today. I wasn't expecting to get a day off due to the rain, but now that I think about it, the weekend before Robo 1 was free too. Heck, you could say that we've been working too hard lately. Not that I've done much of anything. And so, with nobody to bother me all day, I can dive headfirst into Kill Ballad. Although I should be worrying about a bunch of other things, I want to forget all about uh, all of that right now. Anything on Twitter? Yes, due to rain, no club activities today. Os. Laundry won't dry in this rain. Nope, I don't think so. Played two hours, 27-0, feeling good. The public opening of Tanegashima Space Center has come to an end. It was full of families who traveled a long way. We received warm words from our older, passionate fans who we hope will return to see rockets launching again soon. Thank you very much. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Oh, facility public viewing at the Tanegashima Space Center. Popular with tourists. Okay. I thought there was going to be some bad news again. Went to Tanegashima yesterday. It was an empty island, but the fact that it was empty was refreshing. Made me want to relax a bit. I always look forward to when they open to the public. And there used to be a lot more visitors five years ago, but it has been decreasing. Which is fine because I can enjoy it more with less people here. There were only older men and families. Uh, maybe young boys are only interested in robots, so they don't show up. Tanegashima is far. It would be a commitment to go that far. I felt the energy from the workers there. I hope they start launching uh, rockets again. Th then more people will come visit? I don't know. <laughs> and that's true. I actually have absolutely no idea. So I'm thankful about being able to focus on KB, of course, of course. Maybe I just want to escape from reality. After eating breakfast, I shut myself away in my room and played for two hours without losing. I was doing pretty good. I go down to the kitchen and take a pack of Pocky without mom noticing and pop it open. Break time. Now that's summer break right there, honestly. I've really been catching up to uh, Tajirin lately. That's the number four uh, character on the leaderboards, right? I think. I know that the top three all have like a, a pattern to their names. I might overtake them soon. No, they wouldn't let me pass them that easily. I stick a Pocky in my mouth and open up the leaderboards without much thought. Huh? Yeah, wait, what happened here? I, I was looking at, at fourth and that wasn't fourth. And then I looked at fifth and that wasn't fifth. So the top three are just gone. They're, they've just been all completely moved up here. The, the entire top three. The Pocky falls from my mouth as I look at the rankings. I can hardly believe my own eyes. Oi, oi, oi. I bring my face closer to my Pokecom's monitor, rub my eyes hard and look again, but nothing has changed. The top rankings have completely changed. Up until now, I've never been able to get above fifth place. And yet, you're telling me that I'm second all of a sudden, and first place is Tajirin, who up until now was fourth. I immediately know what happened. The top three names have vanished. Uh, Takano Ai, Hanasono, and Bob Lee. The three suspected cheaters who I fought against to help Frau? Well, they're nowhere to be found in the top 50. I'm not totally satisfied by how this all ended. Yeah, I think we gotta get some answers here. My Pokecom immediately dials Frau. She's not picking up. Knowing her, she probably doesn't want to answer. 
If I keep trying, I might be able to annoy her into having her Rosetta bot answer. Considering she's constantly holed up in her room, I know she's more than capable of answering. And there she is. <sighs> Frau looks even more ghastly than usual. The dark circles under her eyes are worse than normal too. Well, whatever. Let's get to the subject at hand. Frau nods slightly at my question. Frau hesitates. Wait, that information is just readily available? Wow, she really sent them over. Ah. Uh, excuse me. In their homes. Just so were they killed? So, had they been dead for months? That wouldn't make sense. They were top three. But they've been top three for so long. There's no way that, like... That the, that the landlords would just allow that to happen. Allow them to be dead for that stench to be going on. No communication for, like, more than two months, no? Like, okay, you're late on rent for, for, you know, this month or whatever. Like, just pay it. Then, like, half a month will go by. Start trying to get in contact. And then another half a month will go by. And it's like, okay, we got to talk to this person. Okay, yeah, what the fuck? There's no way there wouldn't... There there had to have been contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half a year ago. That's nuts. I was literally just fighting them a few days ago. Yeah, now here's the next question. Who the fuck have we been fighting? <laughs> Frau shakes her head. Hmm. Frau describes how their Pokecoms were connected to their PCs. Okay. Starvation. We're almost 20 years into the 21st century. Someone starved to death in this era? That's not a good statement to make, but okay. Frau shakes her head. Yeah, all of them are top three on the leaderboards of KB, all had different deaths, yet were slumped over at their PC, died due to different due to different circumstances, but still all there. Like, like, come on, like, there has to be a connection. Is such a coincidence even possible? No! Just the thought of playing against a bunch of corpses sends chills down my spine. But that's not realistic. This isn't a horror film. But to what end? And if the accounts had been taken, isn't it possible that all three were actually murdered? I have a chaos head feeling going on here. Or chaos child feeling. Whichever is applicable. Who 
半年前の時点で3人は上位に君臨していたしファイトスタイルも特に変わったわけじゃなかったってこともし入れ替わっていたならアカウントを乗っ取ったやつはそれまでのタカの愛や花園やボブリーのファイトスタイルをそっくりコピーしたとしか思えない。Okay, maybe not people, but what about AI? But is that even possible? I, it would have to have been AI. Sure, people can try to replicate a style that somebody has in a game like this, but AI can properly learn that and not perfectly replicate it either, but I mean, it's all data. In the end, Video game shit like this is all just data, so I would assume that AI would probably work better than somebody else trying to fill their shoes. What news? News? Well, the only thing I saw on Twitter was related to the,、uh, to the rocket launches and shit, the Space Center. What? And the, lack, and the lack of rocket launches. Oh? Oh? God damn, let me get a drink game. This is, uh. What the fuck's happening here? So, this is. Who are we following? I think this is the guy that was hanging around、uh, Misaki. Numbers appear on my Pokecom screen. Each second it counts down closer to zero. Countdown until Solar Storm arrives. That's the site name. Enthusiasts around the world are freely cooperating to gather and manage information. The people participating are rather skilled. They accurately predicted the magnetic storm in America the other day. According to the site, the one in America was just the beginning. A bigger one will soon hit the world. They estimate that it will happen. About two and a half months from now. That would be in November. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta keep November in the back of our heads here. Like the middle of November. More like.、Um, yeah, I, I would say around the middle of November. Where are the site managers obtaining such precise information from? Could it be NASA? <sighs> I scoff and prepare to remove the countdown from the monitor. Suddenly, my Pokecom notifies me of an incoming call. As soon as I answer, video chat boots up. Sonomia, currently on a work trip to the Aichi Prefecture factory, appears on screen. However, behind her is not the factory, but the inside of her car. Was this the phone call that they were having, or is this another phone call? Because I remember that she was having a phone call of some sort. I, I don't remember the contents of it though. Yeah. No,、oh, of course. Of course, there's a connection here too. The moment I understand the meaning of those words, I'm hit by an intense urge to click my tongue. I hang up and lean back deep into my chair. I stare up at the dull fluorescent light on the ceiling. The timing is very difficult. Oh, the ball is rolling finally, folks. Finally. Or at least I feel like it is. We're, we're getting a lot of science adventure、uh, a lot of science adventure vibes now. Hold on, before we, we talk to her.、Uh, let's see. The final episode. The miraculous final episode. I didn't think I'd, I'd see it in my lifetime. Nothing on C or D still. <laughs> I run into Akiho's room to find her sitting on the edge of her bed, staring into her Pokecom. She doesn't respond to me. Instead, she keeps staring intently into the screen. I guess she's watching it as we speak. After receiving word from Frau that the final episode of Gun Barrel had leaked, I ran through the rain to get here. I didn't even waste time picking up an umbrella, but it turns out Akiho didn't need me to tell her. 
I sit next to Akiho and look at her Pokecom. Oh. The leaked video is 4 minutes and 31 seconds long. Since it's incomplete, there's no sound. Most of the cuts are rough drafts. Only a small portion of it is in color. Just storyboards animated in sequence. By the time I start watching, the heroine Rosetta is praying atop a massive tower. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, there's some, there's some connections here. There are some connections there. The scene soon shifts and all the robot's power sources, the heroes and villains alike, are going out of control. Hundreds of robots begin to move without their pilots on board and head toward the tower-like structure. I guess it's not a tower. An orbital elevator, huh? I recall seeing those words show up in the Kimijima report from before. Yeah, there's some connections here. So in the last episode, when we actually read the third report, I mean, we did hear of plans for, like, what, 2015? For basically the events that we're seeing here to take place, where, like, 5 billion people would just be wiped out, Earth would basically get fucked up, and people would utilize an elevator? Okay, four years that this shit has been, like, incomplete, and now has been leaked? That's 2015. There's some hardcore connections here. I'm starting to see why Exoskeleton is kind of involved here because of their potential and very likely connection to the Committee of 300. We're drawing the lines here, honestly. We're connecting the dots. The unmanned robots that gather at the base of the tower begin to jump into the blast furnace located there. A robot mass suicide. Soon after, the Grand Obelisk begins to glow, and from its tip that reaches even further than geostationary orbit, it fires a laser beam. This beam hits the sun, piercing a black dot on its surface. It's the same, exactly. The sun entered a period of maximum activity in 2012. The aim of Project Atom is to artificially generate a solar storm by directly interfering with the sun. It's the same. The sun starts to explode, throwing intense fiery energy all across nearby space. This energy inevitably reaches Earth. It's the same. Due to the solar storm and mass confusion on the ground, the death toll is set to rise to 5 billion. It's the same. The solar storm obliterates El Ghazar, the main antagonist, alongside the Anubis military corpse. At the same time, all humans, save for the few that had taken shelter underground, perish. It's the same. The Committee of 300 plans to evacuate a portion of the elite to shelters deep underground. It's the same. Rosetta, after burning out all of her energy, breathes her last. Genki stands before a ruined world as the screen fades to black. The world has been saved. The end. This is basically the Squidward's suicide of this show. Akiho's eyes are red. She's clearly been on the brink of tears since the middle of the video. I blink multiple times. I don't know why, but I feel exhausted after watching this four and a half minute long video. My body is trembling from its very core. I'm not as attached to this anime as Akiho is, but why did Frau's mom run away without broadcasting this final episode? Why did 13 people die right before the broadcasting of the final episode? This smells just like Kimijima Ko. It's as if they knew they knew that this was going to happen. Like, in a very similar way to, like, something happened with Misaki when she was in high school and then her whole, like, attitude changed. Maybe something happened here as well with Frau's mother and the staff. And they were going to utilize the final episode of this show as a warning as to what could happen. Maybe? And maybe that's why they were all killed? Because they all knew? It feels like someone running away from an unseen enemy. And as they try desperately to escape, they attempted to send a message. <clears throat> excuse me. Even if it meant dying for it. 
propaganda. It wouldn't be unusual for the Committee of 300 to be involved in the making of the Gun Barrel anime. Hell, this leaked final episode looks like it was taken straight out of Akimijima Report number 3. Exactly. Crazy shit. Not a single vehicle passes through the tiny hilltop. There rests a quiet park, and above it a clear azure sky. A thunderhead slowly drifts in the wind. The horizon rests far in the distance. I don't know why I pronounced it that way, but I thought this scenery might have drastically changed after what happened yesterday, but that is not the case. In fact, it's so peaceful that it makes me wonder if what happened was all just an illusion. It's a beautiful day. It's not raining anymore, and it's so clear out that it's actually kind of obnoxious. I forget where I am for a moment and gaze up into the sky aimlessly. I'm a little relieved that nothing has changed. Anyway, I quickly jump down from the stairs. I then climb over the fence and jump. I don't know why we were up there. Let's check Twitter. Club will be off today too. I can't eat from the shock of it all. Keep your head up. I don't even have words for a friend who's feeling bad. I am so useless. Oh, come on, Juna. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be fooled by all the rumors and fake news. Take your time to see the real truth. If you don't, you will regret it hard. In any case, do not panic. If you follow that, you should be fine. A promise from Mr. Platus. Thanks. Done with supervising. Played three and a half hours. Exactly 40 wins and one loss. Honestly, I was told that I can get away with responding to Akiho however I want to. It has absolutely no change on the game, so we will respond to her. I understand your feelings, but don't forget you're the club president. You've been moving forward the whole time. You should take it slow and get some rest. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. Let's let's be nice. Uh, I, I think I think that's her 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 bike. It got a flat tire. I am so happy that with my bike, I have yet to get a flat tire, but I also really minimize the amount of times I'm riding that shit. What is this? The last episode of Gunvero leaked? It is here. Episode 156. Is the last episode the one that got cancelled? It actually exists? Why now? I watch, but I don't get it. Is it real? Is it really real? It just looks like unfinished scenes put together. There isn't any sound either. I'm glad I stayed a Gunvero fan. I didn't think I'd be able to see the last episode after cancelling four years ago. It's unfinished, but it is enough. The last episode is here? Director Koguri is back? Well, we got the name right. I saw it, but it doesn't look fun at all. There isn't the excitement of Gun Barrel. Is this girl Rosetta praying? Why does she look so sad? It's the last episode. I don't think anything is... Oh yeah, a fanfic? Keep it quiet the first time just to attract attention when you then upload it. And when it becomes popular, be like, I actually made it was everyone's surprise. I'll be selling it at Kamima, so please buy it. Is probably the plan. It's just a publicity stunt. Honestly, I was thinking in the back of my head, what if it is, you know? Like, what if this actually isn't it? I mean, I'm pretty sure it is, but it did make me think of the situation with Nier Automata. You, know, you guys know about the Nier Automata deal on Reddit? There was that whole deal going on where there was a scene uh, or like a bit of gameplay that was uploaded asking about getting to an area that you actually can't access. And well, in the end, it was all bullshit. Like after all these posts, after all the speculation, after articles and YouTube videos talking about this shit, even I was talking about it with friends and shit. It, it came out to just be to be false. Like it was actually just a huge advertisement for modding tools that were created by fans of the game. I mean, you can't completely rule out the fact that in this day and age with the internet and everything and the tools that everybody has. Yeah, I mean, it could be fake. I don't think it is, but the possibility is there. If it's self advertisement, then the person made enemies with the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. I don't think enemies were made with the Nier Automata community when, when all that shit happened, but it was crazy. It doesn't feel like a happy ending. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was this really Gunvarel's finale? 
crazy how you guys know it just looks boring from a four minute patchworked vid. The Oversea fans are grieving over it. I think everyone really is. Yeah, who uploaded it, honestly, right? Like, who who did that part? Also, why are we here? There's, there's no Irie to see, but yet we are here. I land safely and take a stretch. Oh, I know what we're doing. We're, like, readjusting this shit so a monopole doesn't drop. After searching around the antenna tower for a bit, I did in fact find another monopole. Or we're just looking for them, I don't know. Unable to ignore the problem any further, I climbed to the top of the tower again and moved the antenna. There we go. Okay, so, so we actually did do it. Now there won't be any more stray monopoles, at least for today. I'm thinking of continuing this for the rest of August. Well, not too many more days to go there, bud. Akiho and Mom will probably get mad at me again. But as long as I don't try climbing it during a typhoon, I should be fine. But man, the view from up top is something else. I think it's much better than from the nearby sightseeing tower. It might be because I can see all the way to Minamitane. Climbing this thing during the typhoon royally sucked. But today the wind is gentle and the weather is great so I had nothing to fear and could leisurely enjoy the view. The world hasn't changed. Maybe that's because I'm on this remote island off the coast of Japan. In fact, it's almost disappointing. Though to be fair, the Kimijima reports have had an effect on me. To be honest, I was worried that some sort of global collapse was going to happen right in succession. I thought that the leaking of the final episode might be the flag for something. But in the end, nothing happened. Only a handful of people are freaking out over it. Most people don't care about some anime. There's only one thing that's changed in my immediate surroundings, and that's Akiho being shocked and the club being on break. Apparently she can't even eat right now. Well yeah, I mean the anime was kind of her life. Though I will admit, like, if it was like Bleach or something like that, you know, Bleach was on a, uh, it wasn't cancelled, it just wasn't continuing. It, it didn't have an anime adaptation for its final arc, and that just came out. It would be hugely disappointing if what we got was actually, well, not what we're getting today. If it was something lackluster or, I don't know, even a fan project probably would have been okay. But if it was something that even didn't adapt the source material and just went into a completely different direction and it just wasn't the same, you know? Once I'm off the tower, I head to my usual spot. Normally when I settle here, I go into kill ballad mode. But today my motivation gets cut short after 10 matches. Maybe yesterday's events are mentally affecting me more than I realize. Either way, I'm still better off compared to others. I mean, look at Akiho. And what about Frau? Come to think of it, I haven't spoken to her at all. I'm betting the mental damage that she's sustained is a lot worse than Akiho's. She's discovered that the top 3 KB players have been dead for 6 months. And then right after that, the last episode of her mom's anime leaked. And as the shit icing on the, to the crap cake, the actual episode is a tragedy that completely rejects what the show is about. If what Frau told me about how 13 anime staffers were murdered before the episode aired is true, that makes the meaning behind yesterday's video all the more heavy. Fans online who had been disappointed for 4 years have made a total 180 and are dissecting the video. I went through a few analysis sites yesterday. Apparently the episode utilizes subliminal messages. It's a really old technique with questionable effectiveness. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be questionable because, like, who's going to really grab everything and are they going to grab the meaning of everything correctly? There's no doubt that it's being intentionally used in this instance. The fact that I immediately assume the Tavistock Institute is involved means that, th that Kimijima Ko has his claws in me. The video was up to Nico Nico video, but the perp used a burner account, so it would be pointless to try and track them. They probably used like a VPN and proxy and probably did it like on a device that they immediately destroyed. I, who knows? Who knows? I wonder who uh, uh, who uploaded it. Excuse me. The prime suspect is Koguri, uh, Koguri Minami, the missing director, which would mean that Frau's mom is alive. 
Then there's the Kimijima reports, in addition to the similarities with the leaked episode. I'm curious about how Kimijima Ko was pursued by the committee and the institute, not to mention his mysterious death. I have a bad feeling about all of this. I don't know why or how. I just don't feel good about it. I lean against the rusted fence and let the wind blow over me. If I apply too much weight, it'll break and I'll fall. I need to be careful. I'm oh. glad we realized that. It's then that I notice a familiar face walking down the street. She's pushing her bright emerald blue bicycle along without riding it because she has a flat tire. It's Tenoji-san. She's coming up the hill from the TNSC and going through the park to head to Minamitane. I wonder why she's pushing her bicycle. I watch her from the viewing platform without calling out to her and she seemingly decides to take a rest in the parking lot. Maybe something happened. Oi! When I call out to her, Tenuji-san immediately notices and waves at me. What? She's coming up here? It doesn't seem like she has any business with me or anything. Dozo. Tenoshi san comes jogging up, her steps light as a feather. <sighs> After hearing my warning, she timidly makes her way up the steps. But her usual smile returns in no time. Oh, but we had a better view. She's such a carefree person. It's almost as if she has no idea what happened yesterday. But maybe this is normal for someone who's not that into anime. Akiho said that Gun Barrel is pretty mainstream, but it's still four years old. At the end of the day, anime is just fiction. Regardless of the content of the mythical final episode, it won't affect reality. If I didn't know Frau or the links to the Kimijima reports, I probably wouldn't have even paid it any attention. So just a nice little warning. I, uh, I don't know what my neighbors are doing, but... It does sound like they're trying to, um, I don't know, I don't know. They're doing some something, some yard activity of some sort, some yard work, if you will. Uh, I don't know what specifically, but I'm pretty sure a branch hit my window like an hour ago. So they were out there doing something. I thought they finished, and that's why I started this recording session, but I could have thought I heard something start up again. So if you guys hear a loud noise, uh, just roll with it. I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm not gonna stop recording and wait. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it roll. It blew out. Yep, there it is. I can hear it. I mean, technically it shouldn't be too bad for you guys because I do a little bit of a noise reduction. And my microphone is kind of pointed away from my neighbors, but hard to say. The hell's a hibis a hibiscus? Hold on, I gotta learn. A flower characterized by five petals that are a vi oh, I know what a hibiscus is. They only breed in warmer climates, so the flower has come to represent southern countries. The specific subspecies found on Tanegashima are also known as the Chinese hibiscus. Yeah, I could have sworn I heard that word before. And we know what a subliminal message is. Come on, we've we've all watched Squidward's suicide. <laughs> okay, that, that's a terrible example. No, I mean, there's all the uh, uh, the creepypastas and, and all that, or like scary videos or, or what have you. Uh, or Mudahar's fucking uh, dark web videos where he goes and watches weird shit on the dark web from like years and years ago those those have subliminal messages Thank 
この丘を越えれば南種の中心街でしょそこまで行けば自転車屋さんがあるかなと思ったんですたださすがにちょっと疲れたので休憩しようかと That's fair. 店に電話すれば迎えに来てくれるのにえそうなんですかあでも電話番号が知ってるけどえな、なぜ地元民だから There are three bike shops in the area and all of them have helped me out I'm pretty well acquainted with the owners 電話番号教えましょうかはい、ぜひ Even I feel pretty good having someone so cheerfully nod their head at me Tenoshi-san smells of sweat I wonder why Is she the type who doesn't care about that kind of thing? I think she is pretty tomboyish Kind of, maybe, and, and that's fine, but also, I don't know. What a weird woman. Yeah, let's go with that. She kidna- she kids- god damn, she kidnaps us the day we first met. And she works at an amazing place like JAXA and demonstrated her wealth of knowledge during our Model 2 meeting. Yet she's only a few years older than us. She wears a smile on her face, making you think that she's easygoing, but then she'll bike tens of kilometers like it's nothing. But her eyes rarely smile. I get the feeling that she'd be terrifying when she's mad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Oh, I get it now. She's kind of like Misune. Hi. Eh. Eh. Uchu Gaoka Koe ni irun desu. Hi. Hi. Ah, honto desu ka? Tasukarimasu. While on the phone with Cheetah Bikes, she bows her head a few times toward her Pokecom and then smiles at me. Then, out of nowhere, she tries to hug me. Isn't she supposed to be sweaty? After Nisan nods without a care in the world, she sticks her hand out. Easy enough, Akiho is always grabbing onto my hands and swinging them around. Anyhow, we firmly shake hands. Arigato, Yashio. Nandestake. Kaito. Kaito kun. Oh, so so. Watashimo Kilbara, download a standesio. Ima, Pokekon no Nakani Haitemas. Now that she mentions it, we did make a promise to battle not too long ago. My motivation hit zero earlier, but it's not like I'd have to focus that hard to beat a newbie. Let's give this a go. Shobu. Suru? Eh, Jitensha ya san ga muka ni kuru made desu ke do, zehi. Tennoji san, mai wa kakugei yatte ta te itte da ke? Jisai udemai wa dono teedo na no? Kokou sei no koro wa benkyo bakkari shite te, geimu kara wa tozokatte itte in desu. Demo, chugaku no koro wa. フラットアウトプリンセスっていう2つ目があったぐらいなんですよねフラいや、yeah, wait, what? フラットアウトプリンセスちなみにですね漢字で暴走コマチッと書いてフラットアウトプリンセスと読むらしいですいや、読めないよ Talk about an embarrassing past Did she actually give herself that name? If she did, ooh 最近ポケコンが普及したこともありますけどゲームセンターってほとんど見なくなったでしょでも秋葉原には今でもまだいくつかのお店が普通にあって男の子も女の子も気軽に入ってくるんですキラキラ光ってて楽しそうな BGM がひっきりなしに流れていて Now I don't really remember Nye being all that much of a gamer back in Steinsgate but there was in Linear bounded phenogram, her route was like the secret, like extra route at the very end,、uh, which was supposed to be like after the events of like all the not so great routes or world lines of Steinsgate, where Okabe and Daru were basically always on the run. 
Uh, I don't know, was it Beta World Line? I, I don't I don't remember, but regardless, in her route, she did go to an arcade. I don't remember if she played anything, but that is where she came across Daru. And then that route kind of went on for way too long, I feel. But yeah, I, I don't really remember her being too much of a gamer. <laughs> Damn, what a noisy recording session. Oh, lovely. ちばしっためで試合を見つめ続けていて少しでも声を出そうものなら一瞬で背後から刺されてしまうかもそんなやるかやられるかの雰囲気が漂っているわけですさながらバキの地下闘技場とでも言うようなダーティーでアングラな世
and I think all will be okay. Sir? I can't help but pump my fists into the air. Why? Because Tenoshi-san was way stronger than I expected. I think the more buttons that we have to press, uh, that kind of signifies the strength that they actually have. And that's why we had to press so many buttons when fighting the top three, not as many buttons when fighting Akiho. And we had to press a few here because, well, she actually put up a fight. But that's just a very poor prediction. She's way stronger than Frau or Subaru. Hell, it's rude to compare them to her. It's not that her reaction speed is anything special. Her combo execution is subpar too. I just can't get any hits in on her. She crushes my offense. Her ability to read my moves is insane. It's like she's constantly betting on either choice A or choice B. It's a gamble. When she loses, she loses full throttle. But when she wins, there's no stopping her. It's a strategy that's usually reliant on luck. And the worst part is that I don't have a reliable way of breaking through it. Which means I also have I have to rely on luck. She's forcing me to go at her pace. But jeez, what a risky fighting style. Risky for sure, but it's one that she's perfected after years of observing her opponent's habits while practically living at the arcades in Akihabara. And it's incredibly strong. She's probably the only person on this island who can go head-to-head -head against me evenly. I'd like to think that I'm still winning 6-4. to four. If I can get comfortable enough with Tenoshi san's playstyle, I could bank on my ability to make a comeback and, and try some riskier plays of my own. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but laugh. I'm thrilled. Not since Misune have I met somebody so strong in real life. How can I not get hyped? The only person who's higher ranked than me online is Tajreen. The cheaters from the top three have been de deleted off the leaderboards. Even with an online community of 20 million players, I rarely run into someone who is this skilled. So I can't help but be happy that I've met someone so strong in real life. Ken <laughs> I really wish she wouldn't praise me with such an amazing smile on her face. My heart's racing a mile a minute. What am I, a teenage girl? I want to fight her more. My adrenaline is going full blast, and it feels great. This is the same feeling I get when I fight Tajreen, or when I stood in front of the ring at the Robo 1 finals. It feels so good that I forget about time itself. Tenoshi san was right. It's the same as the arcades, there's nothing more fun than going head to head with someone directly in front of you. You can feel the way your opponent reacts directly. Their frustration when they fall behind, the clicking of their tongue, their sighs, the way they exaggerate their movement when they win. It's this bloodthirsty tension that constantly has you feeling like a fight might break out or something. It puts me on the edge and heightens my concentration far beyond when I play online. The more our skills collide, the more heated and fun the fights get. One mistake can decide it all. One small opportunity can win the match. It's like walking on thin ice. Even then, I'm invigorated. My stomach feels like it might start to hurt, but I want more. With Akiho, Frau, and Subaru, I was never able to reach this level of excitement and thrill. But Tenoshi-san is different. It's as if she's... It's as if she's a gamer? Oh. Yeah. I see it. I, I, see, I see what he means. We have another match, and once again, it's a close one. I'm convinced now that tenoshi sans skills were no fluke. Just as we're about to go another round, I hear a car horn. There is a cheetah, ch uh, cheetah cycle truck parked in the parking lot. A familiar old man is sticking his head out the truck window and waving at us. Oh, it's 
Get a hint, old man. You could have waited another half hour. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tenoji-san puts away her Pokecom and stands up to leave. I hurriedly call out to her. Ooh, first name basis. Tenoji-san stares at me in response to my question. ということですか当然でしょう。ナエさんくらいの実力者となら一日中でもやってたいよ。そう言ってくれると嬉しいです。例えばさ、TNSC にいきなり行ったら対戦してくれたりする。うーん。それはどうでしょう。That's a little we both descend from the viewing platform and I help Nisan load her bike onto the truck. Nisan hops into the passenger seat and we go our separate ways. Is this the Nye route? Is there a Nye route? Because this is seeming like a like the focus is completely shifted towards Nye for some reason there. Unless it was just that scene. I don't know, that, that seemed like like a complete shift in direction. Alright, so while I have a quiet moment. I will uh, end this episode because Jesus Christ did it get loud for like the last 20 minutes or so recording. I'll cut up my audio a little bit so that I guess it's only going to be noisy. If it is going to be noisy, uh, it'll just be when I'm talking. I don't typically do that because, well, it's a pain in the ass. And I do know that there are like um, some filters that I can throw on both in Audacity and probably even Premiere where like it'll do it for me. But I... I like to manage noise gates a little bit more manually if possible because I always talk at different volumes. I'm not consistent, so uh, that that if leaving it up to um, a filter is not something I'm too comfortable with when it comes to recording. Streaming, it's like eh, whatever, who cares? But recording noise gates, not too fond of that. But anyways, thank you all for watching this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Some crazy shit happened here. Really getting the uh, science adventure vibes. I, I think uh, I think we can all agree that some crazy shit was going down, and the mystery gets a a little a little weirder as we continue to look into things. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.